there's a lot of work that goes into doing these events, and not only the events, but all of the work in the committees throughout the year. So I just want to take one last chance to thank Tim and the team for this year for all the hard work they've done. All right. All right, uh, as Karen mentioned, we have a busy day today. So I want to uh, go over uh, some data here for you. And uh, if you have questions, please catch me outside. I'm, I'm going to be here and uh, would love to talk more about some of the details here. Now, I don't think there's a good time to bring up public policy. We try to do this after lunch and people went to sleep. Now we're trying to do it first thing and people are still asleep. So uh, just bear with me as we go through. Now, there's a lot of things going on right now in healthcare. And one of the things that I've noticed every time I go up to Washington, D.C., talk to Senate, talk to Congress, or uh, locally in Sacramento, is that they want to hear stories from us, right? They're, they're tired of lobbyists. They're tired of people who are paid to speak on behalf of someone. They actually like to hear from people, boots on the ground, folks with real world experience. So I can't think of a better way for you guys to participate and join in and give your voice, not only for yourself, for your hospital, for your organization, but for the industry, uh, than through advocacy. So if you guys haven't tried it, it's uh, pretty terrifying at first <laughs> because you have to come knowing what uh, you're, you're talking about, obviously, and also defend your stand. But you're not gonna do it alone. Okay, and we're gonna be here with you. So I encourage you, join advocacy, give it a shot, try it out. Even if you are not the front runner or speaker, uh, just being part of the team is amazing. It's an amazing experience, especially um, uh, going up to DC and, and Sri, <clears throat> I've done with multiple times, just trying to catch the appointments and running past the senators and congressmen in, in, in the hallways and asking them where the other offices are, um, it's a good experience. But more importantly, they listen to you guys. They listen to us because they want our stories because it's raw, it's unfiltered, and it's you know f from the battleground, so to speak. So please, please um, be part of it. Wow, my slides are moving on without me. Uh, that must be Karen moving it. Uh, so. One of the hot off the press items that I uh, want to talk to you guys about is um, the quality payment program proposal rule. It actually just came out uh, the 20th. So this is pretty new. It's, it's 1,058 pages. So uh, I was going through this. And um, so part of your membership dues is not having to read this, OK? So that's what we do <laughs> for you and give you the highlights of it. Uh, but if you want, under your chair, I printed out a copy of the 1058. I'm kidding. Karen would kill me if I did that. Uh, <laughs> it is on the CMS website, however. And uh, it, it, it's, it's great information. It, it's just a lot. So for today, what I'm going to do is synthesize it as much as I can. And again, if you have questions, uh, uh, catch me outside. So why are we doing this thing? Uh, Basically, it's to improve the health of the patients and increase care efficiency. Now, that's been thrown around a lot, but this time around, CMS is trying to get more into the weeds, so to speak, in terms of how can we actually do this. And the program is designed to be flexible, transparent, and structured over time. And here's the part that I want you guys to pay attention to. With input from clinicians, patients, and other stakeholders. This is a copy and paste from the CMS website. They actually really want to hear from you, from the patients, from the vendors, from the other stakeholders. And I'll go through a few, few stories uh, as we go along here. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the CMS administrator, Seema Verma. She is, uh, she has a lot of fire in her and, and she really wants to do the right thing. And I, 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 I saw this quote last night and I said, this is great to bring up. You know, we've heard the concerns that there are too many quality programs, technology requirements, and measurements that get between the doctor and the patient. Can everyone relate to that? Right? Right? 
raise your hand just for exercise, come on. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and this is something that we bring up every time we go to D.C. We say we need to stop getting in the way of the patient and their care. We understand that we need technology. We understand that we need regulation. We understand that we need to monitor quality. But that should not be at the expense of the patient getting their care. And to see this right smack on the CMS website it is something that gives me great joy because this is the message that we keep bringing up to them. And um, CMS will continue to listen. And how we contribute, just so you guys know, there's a, a period where we can submit our comments. So folks like myself, I represent the Western region. I have my counterparts throughout the country. And what we do is we gather comments from you guys, and then we put it together collectively, and we create the HIMSS position paper. And that is what we use to go up and say, we, HIMSS, 55,000 members, say these are the three things that we would like for you to listen to. And it's a very powerful message when you can do it succinctly representing a broad spectrum. Because we don't just have the doctors, the nurses, we also have the analysts, we have the administrators. So it's a, it's a wide range of people. And they, they're excited to hear what do we have to say with such a, from such a diverse group. Now, the takeaways from that 1,058 pages, <laughs> the, the three big ones, I think, are uh, there's strong support for small practices. If you guys remember ICD-10, uh, <clears throat> we went up to the hill and really campaigned to support the small practices, because they were hit the hardest. They didn't have as much support as the big health systems. And we, we see that that trend is continuing, wherein now they're, they're giving really a good emphasis on small practices. And for those of you um, who are on the vendor side for the technology portion, you can still use the 2014 edition up to 2018. Although there's some incentives uh, if you obviously you know, uh, are on the 2015, but the 2014 will still work. And the cost performance uh, is still weighted at zero. I'm gonna explain that in a little bit here. Now, when we first saw this come out, 30,000 and less than 100, it's a good start. But we really pushed that, that number go up so that a lot of the small practices won't be as encumbered. So we're happy to see in the new rule that we're now up to 90,000 for the Medicare Part B. That's the, the low volume threshold. And also uh, 200 patients as well instead of 100. So it's a bigger area where you get more flexibility if you're a small physician group. So I think that's really good. And again, a quote from CMS, they believe that the flexibilities will further reduce the barriers. Because that's one of the things, you know, every time we meet with the, the legislators we bring up, it's not that the doctors don't want to comply. Some don't. But it's more about what can you do in a span of 24 hours with the resources that you have, right? And if you look at it from that point of view, then you have more uh, sympathy, uh, empathy, I should say, uh, for them and, and what they're trying to accomplish, doing more with less. And here's something regarding the technology. Now, one of the things that I had a <laughs> debate with um, a senator before, uh, or former Senator Feinstein's legal counsel was with the technology. And he said, well, why don't we make it more stringent for the vendors so that they, you know, right out the gate, there's no bugs. And I'm like, dude, you've never worked on a system, huh? <laughs> and he said, no, I'm a lawyer from Harvard. Um, I said, well, every time you do a release, I don't care how many times you do user acceptance, you can shake their hands till it's uncomfortable. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be issues, and it's through this iter iterative process that you clean it up. So what you want to do is a pyramid approach wherein they can start, get the feedback, fix it, get the feedback, and, and that's the, the, the framework that you have to think about. And we were going back and forth, and eventually said, you know, thanks for bringing these stories, because no one tells us how these things really work in the real world. Get out of D.C., man. Um, there's a thought. So. 
hearing stories from you guys really helps them understand what you're going through. So don't think that just because you know, I'm a vendor, they won't listen to me. No, trust me, they are interested in your stories. Now, uh, the cost performance category, the zero weight for performance, this is very important because one of the things that we stress is that the focus should be on quality. So as you can see, quality is still at 60%. Uh, advancing care information 25, improving activities uh, 15. And as we get you know, much better at this, more mature, then we can look at some of the cost savings through performance category, but not up front. So I'm glad they listened. Now, those were the big updates that just came out uh, on the 20th. Again, CMS is still looking for uh, more comments. So if you are bored and want to read the uh, their ruling and have some comments, please reach out to me, send them to me. I send it to National, well, I'm part of National, but we bring it up, and especially if you have stories. Nothing is more powerful than stories, and if you don't mind me sharing your contact information, even better, because uh, having a name to a story is just super powerful. And I encourage you to participate, not just in the advocacy events, uh, but also in all the events going on and again, if you don't know where you fit in, that's okay. We will throw you in. So um, talk, to, talk to the guys outside. I will be more than happy to find a place for you based on your, uh, what you like. Now, there are tons of materials. I'm just going to show this to you. You're not alone, right? There's tons of materials. The, the videos that I created um, here in San Diego, actually, are being viewed throughout the country. So we are all in this to help each other out. Here's the Hims Policy Center. This is where we put all of our updates, uh, the newsletters, every week. So if you want to catch up, this is the place to be. And again, we can't do it without our volunteers. So these are my digits. Um, I'm on Twitter a lot, around 3 in the morning. No, that's not me. Um, but Text works, email works, Twitter actually works really well, and uh, please connect. All right. I have time for one question.